they give you a record and you can't get a student loan. Uh, I think it was Elijah Muhammad said, he said, you know, woe to you black men who do not create your own economy because he said it's going to come to a time in this country when the white man, as he put it, is not going to have enough jobs for their own children. Okay. For, <laughs> if I may jump in, I, I, I'll say a couple of few things. I mean, one thing is that I think when we talk about the economic system overall, there is this tension between self-reliance, almost as if we're an autarchic group out there, completely separate, because we don't think that if we, we think that as, as we start basically succeeding in the broader field, things will be restrained. Um, there is a tension between essentially being entirely self-reliant versus essentially competing in the same arena as everyone else, just be, being given exactly the same opportunities, let us go there and do it. And I think that tension is always going to be, be there as, um, as long as we feel that there are some opportunities that have been denied to people. Now, coming back to the issue of education, I think it's, it's a very complex issue. I mean, the average African isn't, doesn't have a PhD in Ghana. The ones that come in the US Okay, maybe more and more ed educated. So I think as we're having the discussion, we, meet, we may need to be reminded that it's not as if Africans on average were more educated than American on average. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Now, in the in America, I think now quite going back to the question of the value of education, I think. I mean, there was no high school named after a saint in the 1700s in I don't know uh, in the suburbs of Accra or whatever. We go to school because it's, an, it's part of the broader system, and it's supposed to signal a few things and grant us a few pro some opportunities. Now, if the opportunities are not there, where would you go to school? So to, to close, I think, I think one has to make sure that people understand that opportunities are there for people when they go to school. I actually, but I do, I, the, the, my last comment would be that I don't think that there is an oh, that there is an um, oversupply of PhDs in a certain field because there is an extreme, a, 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 a too large of a flow of Indians or Africans or whatever. I really think that it, the field is open for the best. Mm -hmm. And I think anyone can be the best if they are put in this right context. I think the reason why sometimes we don't see enough African Americans is because through counseling, through the way they are, they, they, the opportunities are being essentially suggested to them, Along the way, a lot of things happen so that you don't get the young African Americans to where they can be related to another African who may be born the same year. There is a cost of education, though, and, and for higher education, there's a heck, of a, a heck of a cost that people have to pay. And a lot of people aren't in a position to get a college education because of the cost of getting an education is very high, and it's been an elitist system in this country. The world okay, is elitist. Me, well, hold on. If you don't have money, you don't go to college. But there is a return to being can educated. You, can you two, thank you. <laughs> Joy. Thank you, Vince. Uh, well, this is a very complex issue. And um, when I, being a teacher and being in and out of the schools every, all week long, I see a lot that's happening. And on the value of education, I think that education is not just education to go get a degree. If, 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 if that's, I mean, some people feel that way, but, but education for those who have, um, who are in the uh, place in society where they're in control, they're in control of the system, and who is in control, who has the power in this nation? It's not African descended people by and large. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when you go into the school, schools and sometimes our children don't want to study because they don't feel that there's anything out there for them. If, 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 if some feel like, okay, the best way I can do is play basketball, become a rapper, these areas that I'm allowed to get into more easily. So maybe that's the best way I can make money. But when I'm in school and if I feel like, I'll give you an example, sometimes I go into a predominantly white school and black children, African descended children, will run from me. They're not accustomed to seeing somebody that looks like me in, with them. And, and so they're afraid because if all you're looking at all the time is somebody that doesn't look like you, you begin to think you look like that person. So they're not seeing that reflection, okay? And, and so there's a disconnect. Then there's a not flip side to that, which is where they do, they, they run to me because they're so happy to see me. Basically what I'm saying is that if you don't put education in a contest, like what's the purpose? What are we being educated for and about? And where is this gonna lead us? Then we're gonna keep going in these same circles.
I wanted to wind down with the issue of solutions. So I'm going to put all these questions together. And um, what are uh, obstacles to understanding one another? How can we have more compassion or empathy uh, for one another? And is there a possibility uh, for the African and the African American to classify themselves as the same people? So you can take one of those three or put them all together. Ken? I think conversation, understanding after conversing, and then elaboration, elaborating details, and then uh, you know coming up with projects that can enable us to work together. And I think if we if we if we follow that step by step, you know, we'll come up with we'll come up with some things that might help. Because if you look at it from a general point of view, not even African or black or etc. Just look at it as a human problem, mm -hmm. and you see that the problems that you might be describing here happening in the African American community or in an African community are the same problems of human beings everywhere. What I'm saying is, as human beings, it's always good to talk. We are the only beings that can talk and, you know, say what we have in our minds. And then after you talk, you elaborate, and then you collaborate, and then you st start building projects. We could even come up with our own economic system and forget about this one, you know. You mentioned something about, should we call ourselves the same name? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think that's the solution. Um, respecting the different identities that we have, where we come from, and l learning about those is, I think, the key to getting to those solutions. I don't think we know who we are as a people, um, whether it's from a smaller group or the larger group um, context. So learning that history is going to be absolutely critical. Um, identifying what are our issues, you know, is another step to that. Um, so that dialogue piece, what we're doing right now um, in our smaller communities, even in our families, think about it in a microcosm and then the macrocosm from the neighborhood to the state to the uh, nation and then the larger across the um, African diaspora. So to me, I don't think the solution is going to be in any sort of universal identity, but it will be in how we work small in our communities and branch that out. When we were separated, we start speaking different languages in which we couldn't really communicate with one another. And then the tragedy was that we began to see ourselves as different. You know, I'm from Jamaica, or I'm from the Caribbean, or I'm from the islands, or I'm from South Carolina, or I'm from these different places. But you know, in this country, if you look at the history of our people, up to the 1800s, we describe ourselves as Africans. That Negroness, African American, and all that stuff came much later, and it didn't mean anything. We were African Americans. I'm sorry, we were Africans. And the place where I'm from, people still consider themselves African, the African Methodist Episcopal Church. So that's one of our problems, the problem of identity. And secondly, there are so many problems, and you, you all hit on most of it but we need a cooperative economics. Again, Ken, you're right on the money. Look at this system here. It almost failed a few months ago, and we thought it was so mighty and so great. Yeah, we need a cooperative economics amongst African people. Yeah, I, I would say that we, we all are str different but strong um, components of uh, our shared blackness. And our way forward is in understanding the precise strength of the other, the other versions of us that we don't know. And it's in, in, in actively engaging our own people, fellow Africans and fellow African Americans, wherever they come from, and, and, and f you know, f f f fellow black people in general. And in understanding that, putting that in the context of the broader socioeconomic and political context in which we live, I think we can understand how we can move forward what's important, what has led us to this point, where did we fail respectively? Uh, you know, we thought we're independent in the 60s, or we thought it was all over in, 19, in the 60s, and somehow we think it's over in, 2000, in 2009. And understanding essentially at every point where we thought we succeeded, what we missed when we were celebrating success. And now understand that moving forward, we really need to have that more integrated approach.